you know, I respect my elders and everything, but it's like, no. This poor guy got caught in the trap. Oh man, homie. I'm not a big seafood person, but cheers. What's up, people? Hola, hola, mi gente. Buenos dias y bienvenidos de nuevo a mi canal. If you're new here, bienvenidos. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ariana, and I'm a digital nomad documenting my journeys as I travel around the world. Today, I'm tuning in from Cordoba, Spain. I arrived here this morning. I took a train out of Seville, Spain, where I've been staying for the past four days or so. Um, really, I haven't been doing a whole, whole lot while I've been staying in Seville. If you've been following along with my channel, you know that I just finished up my vacation. I had a week-long adventure with my friends out in Greece. It was a whole lot of fun, but I was extremely exhausted, so pretty much I've been just chilling in the house. <laughs> been a homebody, been a hermit while I've been in Seville. Um, but I did get to go out and, you know, see some of the architecture that's out there, try some of the foods, and I plan on definitely exploring more of Seville when I get back, because I'll be in Spain for about a week but today I decided to take a day trip out to Cordoba because here they have the Mesquita Cordoba Cathedral which I am extremely excited to go see um, I was an art major in college and this cathedral is one that I've seen a lot of pictures of and I'm really excited to be able to see it in person um, so yeah I am I have a tour scheduled at noon and right now it's about 10 or so in the morning so I'm just kind of kicking it out here in Cordoba. I just finished having an awesome breakfast. Um, very Americanized. I'm starting to realize as I travel more, I am super Americanized when it comes to breakfast. I love me a good egg and avocado or oatmeal and sometimes that's hard to find so I was really excited when I found a restaurant here that not only serves that but also pancakes and waffles and all that other jazz. Um, so now that breakfast is done and I've had my coffee, <laughs> I'm going to just walk around, explore, enjoy the park out here. It is so gorgeous and they have a lot of just greenery and nature and places to like chill out on benches and just people watch you know all that cool stuff um but just killing some time until my tour starts a little bit later so without further ado vamonos I have a funny story to share with you all. While I was looking at the birds and the ducks, um, this older man came up to me and uh, he was trying to hit on me all. And I just, I always started taking it back because, you know, I respect my elders and everything, but it's like, no, the answer was no. He was nice, it wasn't anything like crazy, but it just blew my mind, like how forward and confident he was with like trying to ask me out multiple times, like, are you coming back here you know do you want a coffee do you want a coffee and i told him i was meeting a friend and like i had to go but oh hilarious to me but something to know that i have seen other black women that are here with older like noticeably older uh gentlemen out here so that is an interesting thing i don't know if that's like a cultural thing here it's specifically black women that i've seen with super older men i mean the guy that was talking to me had to be at least 70 and i might be giving him some grace with that so funny thing funny story funny travel story just want to share that with y'all So 
All these women are out here uh, offering people, I don't even know what it is, something green as a gift. But it's definitely a tourist trap. Like I had to tell her no. You see how she's like being so aggressive? You have to tell them no because they'll try and charge you if you take it. This poor guy got caught in the trap. Oh man, homie. Dang. Got him. Que pena. Dos más. And it really sucks because you don't want to like be rude to people, but some with like hagglers like this, you have to like literally, sometimes I even have to push them off because they'll get physical with you and like literally try to put it in your hand and then charge you for it. It's ridiculous. So, just so y'all know, if you are ever in Cordoba, Cordoba, anywhere in Spain, really this happens all over the world, like don't let the, don't get caught. <laughs> don't get caught. Touring the Mosque Cathedral, or La Mesquita Catedral de Cordoba, was such a surreal experience. As I said before, this great mosque was a monument I studied while in school, and I have always been fascinated by its iconic red and white double arches. Besides just being a beautiful monument, the Mosque Cathedral has such an intriguing and complex history behind its creation. It is a building that brings together two religions. Islam and Christianity, hence the name Mosque Cathedral. It is one of the oldest standing structures in Andalusia and originally began as a Roman temple that was later converted into a Christian church. In 711, the building was converted into a place of worship for both Muslims and Christians, a very avant-garde concept for that time. And over the course of two centuries, the mosque underwent multiple alterations, expansions, and rulers. Yet despite the mix of religions and conquerors, the building was preserved and completed in 987. Today it stands as one of the largest sacred buildings in the Western Islamic world. Not only does it reflect unity and harmony in the story of its creation, but it is also diverse in its architecture with a mix of Gothic, Renaissance, and Baroque styles. To me, the Mosque Cathedral is revolutionary, not just because of its visible beauty, but because it is an example of the beauty that can emerge when we are accepting of one another's differences. All right, so this is my lunch, I guess you can call it. This is a tapa. Uh, called Croquetas de Merluza y Gambas, which is hack and prawn croquettes. Honestly, y'all, I don't even know what this is. One thing to note about here in Spain, which I'm sure most of you guys know, is that they honor a siesta, which is when they shut down between 4 and 8, and so a lot of stuff isn't open. Um, today is actually Monday, and it is 3.40, so I looked up and found this place. They don't close until 4.30. But because it's a Monday, which I didn't know about this, um, a lot of stuff isn't available. Like half the things on the menu, they're like, we don't have that, not today. Um, and there's also a lot of restaurants that are closed too here in Cordoba on Monday. When I was in Seville, everything was closed on Sunday. So now I'm just really questioning, like, when do the Spanish work? Because <laughs> they take off Sunday, and they take off Monday, and then they have a siesta Tuesday through Saturday. Then they have a siesta every day. So it's just like. They don't work out here. They be chilling. I'm not mad at it. Okay, we're about to see. Admittedly, I'm not a big seafood person, but cheers. Mm. It's fishy and mushy, but it's food. I also just realized this restaurant isn't even open tomorrow or Wednesday. Look at these hours. Like, seriously, the Spanish do not work. <laughs> or Americans work entirely too much. 